Hey everyone, I'm Ryan. You're watching 60 Cycle Hum, and in this video, I'm going to unbox one of those Grote uh, jazz box guitars that are on Amazon for 170 bucks. Well, actually, 169 bucks, which is a little nicer <laughs> than 170. So, anyways, uh, I'm gonna change the way. I do things as far as cheap guitar reviews. I've been buying stuff out of pocket and then, you know, like making my projects and then just like storing them forever. I can't keep getting cheap guitars and storing them indefinitely. I've started to give away like the cheap guitars that I get to review. Uh, I've given away two Fireflies now. I'll probably give away a third. Um, and so what I'm gonna do to make this more sustainable for myself is that when I get because I want to keep covering cheap guitars. I think it's fun. I think uh, it gets me a lot of traction on YouTube, which is what I need. I need those clicks. And I think it's informative for people that are like me that are curious about these cheap guitars. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be start using our Patreon money to buy the guitars. And then I'm going to give them away every single time when I'm done covering them. Uh, I'm not going to keep these guitars. I can't keep keeping guitars. I'm gonna die under a pile of guitars. So if you're curious about a certain type of cheap guitar, I'm gonna put the threshold at, let's say like 250 bucks for what we'll call a cheap guitar uh, on Amazon or wherever. Um, if you really, really want me to cover one, joining the Patreon is one way to motivate me, one way to get my ear. Otherwise, I'm just gonna go with my gut and buy what I think will be popular. So anyways, Let's unbox this thing and check it out now that I've pitched my Patreon to you guys. By the way, I won't be giving them away to the Patreons. That's not the point. I'm going to be giving them away to, you know, local kids or whatever. Maybe some charities. Do some fun stuff. Because that seems to be like the fun thing to do. I've, I've done it twice now and I enjoy it. By the way, I'm cutting this open with this knife I found on the beach like 20 years ago, and I just keep it around. <laughs> it's been the knife minute here on 60 Cycle Hum. I know, I know, I'm cutting towards myself. I swear I won't gut myself with this miniature knife. Okay, moment of truth. Let's see what this thing is like. So far, so good. There's no box in box here, it's just in a single box. Tiny little bits of foam protecting this guitar in this case. Put a stand up here, just in case. Obligatory. Radio Shack quality cable here with some picks and an Allen wrench for the truss rod. I mean, promptly throw that cable away unless this is your first guitar and you don't have a cable. I actually kept, I, I've kept some scrap cable around for years just in case and it came in use recently because it was Halloween and I made a board costume for my kid and I used cable all over the place for it. So, I don't know, maybe keep some cable around so you can make a board costume for your kid. Here we go. Well, there it is. Clearly, this guitar is made to be a uh, kind of like a visual copy of the Epiphone uh, Century guitar, the 66th Century, which I have played at the uh, various NAMs that I've been to, and it's a really fun guitar. So I'm excited to see if this compares in playability. It has some uh, a slightly different feature in that it has a tunematic bridge on here instead of the full wood uh, bridge saddle piece. But when I was looking at this online, I was like, I could probably swap out for a wood saddle that you can find on Amazon for, you know, somewhere between 10 and 40 bucks. Let's take a close look at this. Get this out of the way for now. Really nice thin body there. Barely any arch top to it. 
There's barely any arch on this. It's a little bit of an arch, but I, I don't remember if the Epiphone variation had more of an arch. I feel like it must have. Since doing the fireflies, there's certain things I'm, I'm looking out for. Oh, wow, the, uh, the truss cover here is, is wandering on me. There's only one screw holding it in. That's an interesting decision. But yeah, going back to the Firefly thing, I'm looking immediately at the uh, inlay job and it doesn't have the big, fat, thick glue channel around the inlays the way the Firefly did. Frets are for the most part trimmed up real nice. I'm getting a tiny little bit of random scrapes from them, but not like any big bites or anything like that. I'm betting I'm going to need to lubricate this nut pretty good. There's little flakes around the edges of the string saddles. I'm, I doubt you can see that. Closed back tuners. It says Groat since 1989 on this. I didn't, I've never heard of the Groat brand before this. So that's surprising that they've been around since 1989. Smells like Elmer's glue for everyone out there that likes to smell guitars the way I do. Three ply pick guard. I'm not picking up any big quality control issues on this. And a few little tiny finishing flaws here and there. Like just the clear coat has a little dimple on the edge there. You know, it looks like it could have taken another pass through the buffing wheel or something like that. There's, you know, not the shiniest shine on this. But I don't know, it's it's looking all right so far. I do gotta say, I kinda like that truss cover in that it is like a raised metal, like enamel pin sort of look. Kind of a classy look. That little detail on the headstock, that inlay, is kind of pretty in an art deco sort of way. Knobs turn. <laughs> I feel like I should take the plastic off of this just to get the best look out of it. <laughs> I'm gonna put my foot up on something and play it unplugged. The tuners feel fine so far. They're nice and smooth. There's no jump on them back and forth or anything like that. All right, I think we're there. the bat it feels pretty promising. Full hollow. It feels a lot like an acoustic guitar. It just has that full body resonance to it. The action is not bad on it at all. Fully playable here. I feel like I should plug it in. What do you guys think? You think it's time to plug it in?
the way, I'm running into my Rev D20 back here and my Princeton Reverb reissue. So those are running at the same time. Let's do one or the other. There's a Princeton, let's put some reverb on it. Here is the Rev. Let's get it crispy. It's already going out of tune. Something I'll say is that the frets don't feel gritty the way... There's a little bit of grit there, but not like those Fireflies did or that Harley Benton semi-hollow where they both had kind of like equally gritty frets. These feel much more polished. They're not perfectly polished. They're not like little, you know, little strips of mirror here. They're not hyper polished, but they're definitely better polished. There's a little bit of grit there. Uh, then the other frets I've tried on recent budget guitars. What do we think about the tone of this thing? Ah, that's crispy. Turn that down. I'm definitely picking up the character of the full hollow nature of this guitar in the sound of it. It's like there's this hollow like ring when I palm mute and play. When I'm playing unmuted as well. It's dialing like a jazzy tone. There's something kind of like lo-fi and nasal about the sound of this pickup, or it's, you know, something to do with the build of the guitar. And if you're going for that kind of like 1940s sort of sound, this is going to give it to you. I definitely say don't buy this guitar and expect it to sound like one of your other guitars. It's got its own unique th thing going on right now. Let's kill that reverb. Or at least dial it back a bit. Let's try it with some slide. 
I've got a uh, Diderio slide here. Where'd the case work go? I've lost it. All right, Diderio glass slide here. I know it's not the best slide playing in the world, but it's my slide playing. <laughs> so whatever. I don't know. I, I I think this guitar's got promise, guys. I think it's fun looking. It's fun to play. The fret axis, you know, you can look at it and know what fret axis you're getting with it. But the action and the playability of it is there. I'm not getting any big burrs or anything on the frets. The frets feel like they're dressed just fine. They're not gritty like those other cheap guitars I've been playing lately and they're not perfect you know perfectly polished frets by any means I didn't have any trouble getting it in tune the strings were floppy for a big road journey so it hasn't been staying in tune but the tuners seem solid um, if there's any issues with the nut you can fix it with pencil lead um, I think swapping out the bridge on this for a wood saddle will get you a lot closer to the feel that this guitar is trying to telegraph with its looks. Um, but I don't know, I'm not picking up any weird frequencies or weird playing dynamics using the bridge as it is, so it's probably fine. But if you really want that round, deep, jazzy tone that the looks of this guitar are trying to promise, you probably want to experiment with getting, you know, a bridge off of Amazon that's like 10 to 40 bucks or something like that. I know that there's gotta be stuff out there. Um, yeah, I think it's cool. What do you guys think? What did you think of the tone of this guitar? What do you think of the looks? I'll do some close-up photos of the fret ends and the nut and things like that and any little quality control issues I find. But I think it's promising. I think this guitar delivers at 169 bucks. And if you're casually interested in, you know, this style of guitar, you've been looking at the Epiphone and you're just like, ah, I want it, but I don't, you know, what are those things, like 600 bucks? I don't, I don't 600 bucks want it. This one's 169 on Amazon. And you know, with Amazon, you can return it super easy if you need to. So I don't know, guys, you, you tell me. What do you think in the comments down below? Um, thanks for watching. <laughs> Please like, subscribe, just like, leave me rude and nasty comments. Support us on Patreon, of course. That's how I'm gonna start funding uh, my cheap guitar adventures, which means I'm much more open to trying out stuff that you suggest. So suggest other guitars you want me to try down below. I'm gonna try to go with stuff that is popular because I'm trying to get clicks here. I mean, clicks put diapers on the table and food over our head. Um, <laughs> but this is fun. I'm looking forward to, uh, doing the rest of the coverage with this thing. I'll probably do some pickup measurements to see what the output is on this. Um, I'll probably try to lower the action to see how fast I can get it, learn some fun jams that go with this guitar, and uh, then give it away to some kid or someone who completes a random task for me. <laughs> All right, bye everyone, stay grounded. Thank mm -hmm. you.